Hi, um, in this video I'll go through two questions that were submitted. Um, so thank you Sylvia for submitting them. Let's go through the first one. So on general ability, if you don't know the meaning of any of the words in the question and the choices A, B, C and D, all the words are not recognised by yourself, what should you do? Should you guess it, right? Um, that is my ch child's question. If you could give us advice that would be great because there are there is no time to memorize vocab words and besides there are thousands of words in the dictionary okay that's that's there's two points in there i'll address that soon um i'll keep reading through the question do you have a list of words that are commonly used in newspaper magazines or possibly out in the selective test this will help my son to get short away to study about questions of same meaning or which one is odd ones question okay Let's go through the first part. So on general ability, on general ability, if you don't know the meaning of the words in the question, um, what should you do? Okay, let's bring it here. Oops. Okay, let's look at a question. Um, if you don't know what this word means, which is the word in the question, at, along with all the words. Um, all the words in the solution options, then I guess the strategy that I would use in the exam would be then to guess. Because if you don't write anything, you're not going, if you don't put any solution, any of the options down, you won't get any marks. However, if you put something down, you might be lucky enough to get that correct and therefore you get that mark. Okay, so. It's sort of like saying, well, if you buy a lottery ticket, um, you know, there's no, no, you know, the chance of winning is very low anyway, but at least you've brought out a lottery ticket um, and you've paid $2 for a lottery ticket. But if you've paid $2 and you don't get the lottery ticket, well, you're still down $2 and there's no chance in you winning at all. Okay, so that's what it is. Um, so that would be the strategy. However, um, one thing to note is that in the exam, the, usually with these type of questions, there is something, there is one or two, there are one or two words that you must um, be familiar with. So just say for that question, the word arid is most nearly the opposite of desert, moist, oily, regular. If you don't know what the word arid means, that's fine. Um, you can always look at the options. Don't look only at the words itself and think, okay, I don't know the meaning, so therefore I can't answer this. Look at other things because general ability is also a question about strategy, okay? I would be looking at things like, okay, I know what desert means. It means it's, an, it's a desert and it's a noun. I know what moist means, so it means something that's a bit wet. I know what oily means. It's um, something like... Um, but when you touch it, it um, it's not wet, but it's it feels odd. It feels like oil, <laughs> which which is quite funny actually. Um, and then regular means something that happens continue um, on a reoccurring basis. Um, so it could also describe something as well. So it's an adjective. Um, so now that you know that, you've know, you know that these three are adjectives and this is a noun. So it's unlikely that if it's going to be opposite of something, it's definitely not going to be, um, well, it's unlikely to be the opposite of desert because you've got three, three, quest, three, three here that are pretty much nouns. So if you thought, some, if you thought arid um, was say wet um, you know you none of these would really apply but you've got here something like moist oily and that's describing um, how things how, how things are okay um, and those two words would be quite familiar to you you've got regular which doesn't really doesn't really sort of fit this mold of moist or oily so it's unlikely that that would be a solution. So you've got really either moist or oily and you've got really a 50% chance of getting one of these correct given that you've appropriately um, eliminated 
the incorrect solutions. Um, so, you know, if you still don't know, again, just make a choice. Um, in this situation, the word arid means dry. Um, it's usually um, used to describe the word desert, so an arid desert. Um, if you had heard of that phrase before, which if you do a lot of reading, um, newspapers, you, you would have come across that term and you would then know that the answer would be B, moist. Okay, um, just the same thing as here, question 13, the word identify means most nearly the same as, well, if you don't know the word define, that's fine, we'll leave it as that, but most would know the word describe. It means to say something like um, a cat is black, so you're attributing the, the property of being black to the cat, okay? Uh, recognize is in saying that cat is my cat. And determining is saying, well, that cat must be my cat. So it's a bit different. So you know that identify would be definitely not be described. And you've got these two options, which are quite similar, similar similarly to this moist and oily. Okay. Um, and the word define, if you don't know what it means, and you've got two similar options, you've got a better chance of knowing, well, if the two similar options might be a possible solution to the to the question. In this case, recognize is saying that cat is mine. So you're saying that cat, you're identifying it as being my cat. So therefore C is the answer. That when when I've used the example of that cat is mine and that cat must be mine, or I'm saying that that cat is mine, um, you're doing two diff slightly different things there and it's really important to, if you can't differentiate differentiate what the meaning of the words are, um, it's good to use examples like saying that cat is black, that is my cat or that cat must be mine. Okay, um, and by putting things into examples you're able to better understand what the word means, okay, and therefore be able to end answer the question um, more um, appropriately. Okay, so that's the first one. Um, this is my kids, if you give us advice, it would be great because there's no time to memorize vocab words besides there are thousands of words in the dictionary. Um, I wouldn't recommend, um, this is just my view on it, but I, I personally do not read vocab words in the dictionary because as you said there are thousands of words more than thousands but it's just not a very effective approach in doing this because you are going to be using those words in context so it's the best thing I would recommend would be to read a newspaper article that's 500 to 1500 words in length so you can get this from the age um, on a weekend or just more more complicated newspaper articles and within that article highlight say five to ten words that you don't know the meaning of and then write the definition of that in a separate piece of paper so look it up in the dictionary and then write it out in paper um, what that word means so this exercise has a twofold um, benefit the first is that you're getting to understand what that word is used in writing so you know what the context of the word is and that's going to help you in reading comprehension later on. Um, the second part is that you're finding the definition so you've actually um, now know what that word means. Okay so let's move on to that so that's that's what I would recommend just read a newspaper article that that's long that is that long every single day up until the date of the exam because your vocab will improve and you'll be familiar with things because you'll see the words again and again. By reading one word in the dictionary you will not memorize it um, unless you read it again and again but it's I guess it's no fun anyway. Okay so the next part is do you have a list of words that are commonly used in newspaper, magazines or possibly out of a selected Again if you do the newspaper articles um, 
read one newspaper article each day up until the day of the exam and do the same thing as I said before. Um, you don't need to you don't need a list of words that are commonly used in a newspaper or magazine because you will be reading the newspaper. Okay? Um, or possibly out of here, this, this section, possibly out in the selective test. Um, it's very hard to know because a lot of the selective, a lot of the words are taken out of newspapers and other articles. If you're familiar with reading and you read quite a bit every single day, um, you know, I don't think there would be any difficulty in this part. So this will help my son to get a short way to study about questions, same meaning, or which is, or which op one is odd ones question. Okay, so again, the list of words, one, I don't have one, a list of words, because what I would recommend is to go through the newspaper articles. I think it's a more effective way, and I think it's, um, it has greater longer term benefits as opposed to just memorizing a list just for the test itself um, if that list did exist. So moving on to question two, second things, how to think quickly to find answer for what number comes next. I know you have explained it in your book but when it comes in the real test we always need time to think because it's a complicated number and time is rushing. Okay so um, so it's complicated, okay, number and there's limited time. Please give us a tip when it comes to complicated numbers such as 30 slash 6, 40, 13, 62, 22, 84, question mark. I know the answer, but how can we think straight away without spending too much time trying plus division times and divide? Sorry, plus um plus subtraction, multiplication and division. In your theory, if the next number is decreased, use subtraction or division, but how about the above question? Okay, um, I've got my book up. Here it says, if the number series is going down, that is, is if each number is less than the previous number. Logically, this suggests that subtraction or division is involved. Okay, that's the first thing I'm saying. This is because subtraction and division results in numbers that are smaller than the previous number. Okay, so that's logic. They may be involved with um, they may be involved with a combination of other operators such as addition or multiplication. So just because the number is going down, it doesn't mean it's only subtraction or division. There could be other things after subtraction or division or in combination with it that change the I guess the relationship of each numbers. Okay, so therefore. In identifying a relationship, we need to first think about subtraction or division as a first step. Okay, let me apply. Let me show you how I applied this because I, I did look at this in the morning. What it is is you've got. Let me write in red. You've got 30 going down to six, and you've got 44 to 13, 62 to 22, and 84 to whatever. First thing you need to do is, I'm looking at the numbers, I'm not seeing any coherent pattern um, that applies, okay? Because there's no sort of multiple of 13 to 44 because, you know, this is an even number, this is a prime number, this is an even number, this is an even number. This section here should give you that clue that there are, there is going to be more than just a simple division or subtraction um, that's involved. Okay, so the first thing I know is, okay, well, sub sub subtraction or division is involved, but what? It wouldn't be subtraction because, you know, 30 divided by 6 is 24. Sorry, 30, um, 30 minus 6 is 24. And then 44 minus 13 is 1, 31. Okay? Um, you can see there that there's nothing consistent in this. Okay? Then you do divide. 30 divided by um, uh, 6, 30 divided by 2 is 15, okay, um, 30, 44 divided by 2 is 22. You can see that there, there, there's something there that could work, so you've got 15 and 6, you've got 13 and 22, 
Note here that this is a, one of those questions where you can't just think of the number as being 13 as a block number. 13 is also 1 and 3. Okay, and in general ability, they can see that as being separate. And that's one of the tricks. We don't take numbers for granted as they stand. We can see them also as individual characters or individual um, item numbers like 1 and 3 grouped together. Okay, that's one of the tricks with general ability. Okay, and, and you can see that because um, plus and division, plus a plus sign must be involved somewhere. Okay, and then you've got 62 divided by 2 equals uh, 3 and 1. Okay. You can see that I've divided by 2 because that's the only thing I can see a relationship to here. Um, I wouldn't be dividing, say, 30 by 3 because it's 10, and then it just looks really complicated. Usually with um, general ability, there is a really simple um, relationship that holds everything together, and it's just a matter of finding that relationship and then applying that consistently throughout each um, item. So you've got there this part here divided by 2. What I would do then is I'd say, well, 15 to relation to 6. Well, if I don't consider every 15 as a number and I consider it as 1 and 5, it looks like the 1 is minus 1 and the 5 is plus 1. Okay, and then you get 6. And then same with this. It looks like 2 minus 1 is 1, 2 plus 1 is 3. So everything, after you divide it by 2, so the relationship is 1 divide by 2, 2 minus 1 from the first character, we'll just call it a character, which means it's the first, I guess, little letter um, of that group, and then add 1 to second character. So what you've got is 15 plus 1, so 1 plus 1, sorry, 1 minus 1 is 0, and then you've got 5 plus 1 is 6, so you've got 0, 6, which equals 6, okay? You've got something like 22, 2 minus 1 equals 1, and then 2 plus 1 equals 3. You add them together is 1, 3. Okay? And so you know that if this relationship holds for two of them, you don't need to go through the third one to test it again unless, you know, the, um, yeah, you're suspecting something odd in your relationship. Um, so let's do 84. This is this is the solution. So 84 minus 8 minus 1 is 7. 4 plus 1 equals 5. Okay, and that's the solution. So it would be 75. Okay, so. I know I'm, I'm going through it slowly because I'm trying to explain to you the logic, but you can go through this quickly because all you need to do is, if you do a few more practice questions um, and you know what strategies to take, you wouldn't sit there and think, okay, I have to divide by something. I have to um, look at subtraction. If you look at the numbers itself and you go, well, this subtraction isn't working, you could do that into, um, you could, check that out within 15 or let, let, say 10 seconds and you do the next 10 seconds to see is this divisible a number pattern showing something that is divisible um, easily well then you move on to the next pattern and the next pattern is something like divide by 2 add 1 minus 1 okay so that's how you approach these questions you need to figure out what you're looking for specifically is the relationship if it's going down there must be some sort of division or subtraction involved somewhere. That's logically speaking. Um, and then, you know, 
addition and subtraction are involved in this case because it's a combination. And you can see that through the solutions. And the giveaway here is this part. Okay? So you know something odd is happening or some special relationship exists when you've got something like 44, which is an even number, working with a prime number. Okay? Um, so that's that solution. That's all this part. This part is also in the book as well. It's not explained um, in in sort of with this question, but it, it is explained in terms of using combinations. So I know the answer, but how can we think straight away without spending too much time trying this? Okay, well, first of all, we do, wouldn't have to try plus minus thing. You'd all you, the first thing you would do is to look at division and multiplication. And then after that, think, okay, well, this is a combination. We have to work out some combinations. Usually, they're simple combinations like divide by a big number like 2 or divide by something like 3. Sorry, they wouldn't do, unlikely to divide by 3, but, you know, subtract by 10 or something like that. But you can generally get a feel of the pattern after you've done a lot of these sort of harder questions. Okay, so I've answered these two questions. Um, if anyone has any other questions um, they want to throw at me, just feel free to email through at success at examsuccess.com.au. Um, due to personal reasons, I'm not actually running the lectures anymore, um, but I'm happy to accept any questions by email if um, you have any. Okay. Um, other than that, I hope everyone, um, hope all the best for the exam in March. Okay, thanks.